Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you from Lagos. A reminder of our major stories tonight. Panic in crossover state of a suspected case of polio as federal government swings into action. Troops repel attack by fleeing Boko Haram members in Madagali at Damawa State. Head of Service of the Federation hints at reforms in the Federal Civil Service. And Head of Gambia's Electoral Commission flees the country following alleged threats after Yaya Jammeh lost the presidential election last year. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelcv.com, and watch our videos on youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelcv.com, or download the Channel CV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Having the Channel TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You can also be part of the eyewitness feature, being part of the news. As you saw the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that you sent into eyewitness portal. We'll begin with this one. It's coming right up. An overloaded vehicle from Ogun State, a man putting some items on the roof of a car that's already overloaded with jerry cans possibly containing liquid on the roof of the car. In addition to stuffed bags in the boots, eyewitness reporter says this vehicle being loaded just before a journey is typical of travelers' experience in the area. He's asking road safety officials to create more awareness of road safety. Also, is this one from Lagos State showing a moving vehicle on three wheels along Lagos Badagri Expressway? Eyewitness reporter wants road safety officials to rid our roads of such unsafe vehicles. From Oyo State comes this image where we see a car which crashed into a street light on Makola Road in Ibadan. Our eyewitness reporter says that despite the road divide and markings, the driver lost control. He's asking motorists to be more safety conscious and ensure their cars are in good condition. Next, uh, from Lagos State, is this picture showing a bad portion of Wimmer Crescent Link Road in Ajagunle. According to our eyewitness reporter, the damage was caused by pressure from passage of haulage trucks. He wants the authorities to urgently repair the road and regulate the movement of such heavy-duty vehicles. Finally, is this one from Nasarawa State, where we see what appears to be a classroom in Basa, local government area. Our eyewitness reporter, who accuses the government of neglect, says this building was put up solely by community effort. He's asking the authorities to bring development to this part of the state. Thanks for sending in those pictures. In other news now, the president has met with the former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshomale, at the presidential villa. The former governor is visiting President Mahmoud Buhari for the first time since leaving office last November. Oshomale's visit is coming amid speculation that he's been tipped for a major federal appointment. Efforts by State House correspondents to give a hint of the discussion proved unsuccessful, as the former governor said he was at the villa just to exchange pleasantries with the president. We turn our attention to security. Now, what could have been a New Year disaster was averted in the early hours of today by the Nigerian army when they saved residents of Adamawa State, northeast Nigeria, from an attack by fleeing Boko Haram insurgents. The soldiers repelled an attack on Gulak, the headquarters of Madagali local government area. Confirming the incident, spokesperson for 28th Task Force Battalion in Mubi, Major General Akintoye Badari, says the attack was successfully curtailed by prompt action of the troops. Chairman of Madagali local government area, Ahaji Yusuf Mohammed, lauded the activities of the military, asking for more troops to beef up security in the affected communities. Meanwhile, as part of measures aimed at restoring law and order in southern Kaduna, the Nigerian army says it plans to site a military establishment in the area for quick response. 
This was made known by the Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sunny Umar, who adds that the Army is working with other security agencies and the civilian population to restore peace and promote tolerance in the area. I want to inform you that Nigerian Army is fully deployed in the southern part of Kaduna State. And just yesterday also, we further reinforced that. And we have gone beyond that. We have also embarked on civil military um, activities. And we are working hand in gloves with other security agencies, particularly the Nigerian police, the Department of State Services, and other military paramilitary agencies deployed, as well as community and traditional, as well as religious leaders. So be rest assured, the Nigerian army is fully uh, on ground in southern part of Kaduna State. Then again, the order of battle of the Nigerian army has made provision for sighting of military establishment in that part. And any moment from now, we are going to have it. Be rest assured, uh, we are fully deployed and uh, we will avert reoccurrence of such uh, unnecessary bloodshed. Staying with security, the Nigerian army has deployed 800 officers and soldiers to Sudan on a peacekeeping mission. The troops are expected to depart Nigeria for Liberia in a couple of days. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Boratai, warned them that the Nigerian army would not tolerate acts of cowardice and negligence as they carry out their mission. The army chief advised the contingent to abide by the rules of engagement, exhibit braveness, a bravery, beg your pardon, as professionals, and respect the cultural sensitivity of the people of Sudan. In addition, he reminded them of the United Nations zero tolerance on drug trafficking and human rights abuse. As you are aware, your role at UNAMI has been changed to being the first reserve battalion, implying the need for you to be agile and decisive in countering any threats that may present itself. Our amiable Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Borotai, approved the initial training of number 46 at the specialized welfare wing of the Nigerian Army School of Infantry for four weeks. This unique training has equipped number 46 with the robust, robustness needed, the agility, and the right frame of mind to We do apologize for the poor audio quality of that report. Let's join Linda Akigbe now in Abuja, who has more on the news at 10. Hi, Linda, and Happy New Year. Hello, Amarachi. Now, after more than a year of strategic planning, the present administration's civil sector reforms has set for implementation in 2017. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, said this just as federal civil servants return to work today after the public holiday. Some of the workers in part offered a different perspective about the present state of affairs. A correspondent, Ajuri Ngilali, reports. The morning sun accompanied dreary feelings of impending monotony as civil servants trickled into work after several days off. While worker motivation ebbs, some civil servants agonized that the non-payment of salaries before the holiday season created a forgettable leave from duties. Lack of money, no money in circulation. Most people travel, they don't even have money to come back. Back to Abuja now. We can go to wherever we choose to go. We said to stay indoor, but as far as discipline is concerned, I think we are law-abiding citizens and we maintain the discipline. Other government employees say that poor attendance following the holiday has become part of the culture over past decades. Not a, a quarter of civil servants are in the offices because of uh, this fact that m many of us have traveled to our villages and we are yet to come back for the, for the break. 
tasked with a weighty overhaul of what has been a leaky public sector, the head of the Federal Civil Service, Winifred Oyoita, details a new ICT database which will track the career progression, biographical data, testing history and training history of every civil servant in the Federal Civil Service in a bid to separate the highest quality from the lowest. When we have this uh, innovation uh, panel going on around the MDAs, civil servants, workers would want to be engaged in these uh, uh, activities that would bring in revenue into, into the government. Concerning the decrepit state of toilets and other public facilities at government agencies, the civil service boss says President Muhammadu Buhari is touched and moved to solve the problem. Ministry of the Federal Capital Territory has been given the full mandate and responsibility to oversee the Phase 1 Secretariat, which was previously under the office of the SGF. Ajuri Engelale, Channels Television News. The staff of the People's Democratic Party have protested at the party's national secretariat in Abuja over the continued closure of the facility since June last year. According to the protesting workers, the continued closure of the party office has affected the payment of their salaries as they are unable to carry out their work. The secretariat was shut down by personnel of the Nigeria police after a series of protests by the supporters of the two factions laying claim to the leadership of the party. A total of $270 billion has been earmarked for maintenance, repairs and rehabilitation of 52 bridges in Nigeria. The set amount is to be expended over a three-year period, the subject to legislative appropriation. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, said this in Lagos while inspecting the rehabilitation of a Lagos Ring Road bridge before the third mainland bridge. Our correspondent, Olu Phillips, reports. The third mainland bridge is in the news again and it borders on repairs and maintenance. Unknown to many of you, for several months, while you drove or were driven on this bridge, some expansion joints and reinforcement pillar were integrity suspect. But just before you press the panic button of what could be a possible closure for repairs, let me burst your bubble. The expansion joint that went bad and the reinforcement, especially at the outer marina end, has been fixed. And that explains why the Minister for Power, Works and Housing has come out on the first working week in the new year to inspect the work done. It's been caused by some ecological problem, erosion, uh, sand filling and all of that. So sections of this road have moved, as you would have seen from the photographs there, uh, as a result of uh, subsoil displacement. So there was some work that was awarded to correct it, but clearly, as the contractor was telling me why it hasn't been completed since they were not paid. So they just got money in 2016. Um, when this administration resumed work. Mr. Fashola is, however, worried that most assets like this have not been maintained for several years down the line. He says that narrative is about to change. We now have a three-year plan, uh, I think affecting about 50-something bridges across the country. Maintenance? maintenance, repairs, <clears throat> and uh, uh, restoration and it's going to cost about 270 billion over three years we've done all our work now we surveyed all those bridges we know what is wrong we are ready to go we just need appropriation approval perhaps on a preservatory note the minister is asking everyone and anyone doing business on the bridges across the country and those who use major roads and highways as parking lots and business centers to begin to move voluntarily or get forced out in the coming days Olu Phillips, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, crude oil prices fall after hitting 18 month high as producer supply cost deal comes into effect this month. That's business news. Join us again.